Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. My name is Sandra Frerichs and I'll be your host today. Our topic for today's webinar is sustaining summer learning. In today's webinar, we're going to explore the risks and opportunities that summer brings for children and families. When the school year ends, some families look forward to opportunities for new experiences and time together over the summer. But for families in high poverty environments, summer can mean a struggle with meeting basic needs like healthy food and safe places for their children to spend their days. Summer can also put children at risk for summer learning loss. So today we're going to look at some research on the risks that children face during the summer and the opportunities and resources that you can use to support families and youth in your summer program. I'll be sharing a lot of resources today from After School Alliance, from the National Summer Learning Association, the Wallace Foundation and other researchers who examine um, these issues related to summer risks and opportunities. All of the resources we share will be available at clicktosciencepd.org with this webinar recording in a few days. This infographic is from After School Alliance and it helps us understand why summer learning is so important and sets the stage for the changes that we want to make through our summer learning programs. We know students sometimes um, slide or lose learning experiences over the summer, particularly in reading and math, and that low-income students are more likely to experience summer learning loss than higher-income students. So these are some of the issues we're going to be examining in today's webinar. We're going to be focusing, as I said, on risks and opportunities that happen in the summer. And this is research from a Mott poll in 2012 that identified the top health concerns for children in the U.S. And I don't think these have changed very significantly since 2012. The numbers are probably a little bit different, but I think the top 10 is still about the same. So as you look at these um, top 10 concerns for children. I want you to think about the children in your program or your community and how summer may increase their risk in any of these areas. So as you look at this, do you see areas where summer puts children at a greater risk? Personally, I'm very concerned about those top two issues related to exercise and obesity, and those are some I'm going to come back to. In fact, there's a blog at Click to Science PD where I looked at how um, summer can provide unique experiences, not just in learning, but in becoming more confident and stronger for children as well. And um, exercise is one of the issues related in that blog. Let's start by thinking about some of those health risks we just looked at. We know that summer increase risks for some children. And for me, hunger tops this list. This research from Hunger Doesn't Take a Vacation in 2016 showed that for every 100 children who were receiving free or reduced meals during the school year, 15 of them were receiving that over the summer. 15% of the children were receiving meals over the summer. That means 85% of the children who received free or reduced meals during the school year did not have access to food in that context or, or to replace those meals over the summer. So the risk of hunger for that 85% is greatly increased. And um, we see that that in impacts the whole family uh, as um, there are more need to feed children during the summer. Parents may eat less in order to make sure that their children are fed. And it may not be 
intuitively obvious, but it does make sense when you think about it. Summer is also a time for weight gain for children, particularly those who are at risk for obesity. Most of their weight gain happens over the summer. At first, this was expected that it would be wintertime weight gain because that's pretty common in adults. But for children, the, um, the weight gain that leads to obesity, obesity happens primarily during the summertime. And when you think about it, it does make sense. Because if families are looking for inexpensive food to fill the gap from those free and reduced meals, they may be turning to high-calorie, low-nutrition foods. Um, that are not as expensive, like fruit drinks rather than fruit juices, or chips rather than fresh vegetables, where you can save money but, uh, and fill children up, but because the food is low in nutrition, it actually leads to weight gain at the same time. Also contributing to obesity over the summer may be low activity levels and irregular sleep schedules, which all can help um, increase obesity as well. And the other area of concern is related to domestic violence. The research here is not quite as clear, but there is indication that there are increases in, in domestic violence over the summertime, particularly during heat waves or over summer holidays like Memorial Day or Fourth of July. So what is happening during the summer academically? Child families who have higher incomes are able to enroll their children in summer enrichment programs and camps or have in-home caregivers who can provide enriching experiences. But many low-income families can't take advantage of these opportunities due to the cost for the program or lack of transportation to get children safely to the program. Research shows that children who are not participating in summer learning experiences can lose up to one month's learning over the summer, and declines, as we mentioned earlier, are greatest in reading and math. And perhaps most disturbing, this setback is cumulative, so that by the fifth grade, students who haven't had summer learning experiences may be as far as three grade levels behind their peers. And in rural areas, children are at enhanced risk because of their geographic isolation. There are nearly 8.9 million children in the United States who attend rural schools. 48% of those children in rural schools are eligible for free or reduced lunch. So their families are limited in their incomes. And geographic isolation may mean that these children have less opportunities to participate in summer programs, to find enriching experiences, or even to visit a library because it's not close enough for them to be able to affordably get there very often. In addition to health and academic risks, there are some safety risks that are unique to summertime. Like after school hours, summer is a time where children may have a lot of unsupervised time, sometimes eight to 10 hours of unsupervised time while their parents are at work and they are at risk of engaging in unsafe activities during this unsupervised time, like crime or drug or alcohol use. There are also um, unique risks related to summertime to heat stroke or sunburn to boating or swimming accidents on the water, risks from um, physical activity, from sports or playground play, or playing in an unsafe area over the summer. And finally, because children have so much free time, they may be spending a lot more time online, which puts them at risk from internet predators and cyberbullying as well. So we've talked about a lot of risk that can be inherent in summertime. There are also some opportunities that summertime can provide, and we want to um, keep track of the flip side of this discussion because it's important to recognize that summer can give children an opportunity to dive deep into engaging experiences that they really enjoy and they learn from. Outside of the traditional classroom, they can develop their interpersonal skills, connect with issues or, or um, ideas, topics that are important to them, and um, learn about their community and what's important in their community. There are opportunities for extended learning experiences where they can spend a week or two learning about a particular topic like robotics or engineering and dive deep into that. 
They can go outdoors to get field experiences in wetlands or parks and learn leadership and teamwork skills as well. All of these experiences can develop and enhance their 21st century skills, spark their interest in STEM, and sustain them over the school year uh, as they face more challenging learning experiences. Doris Entweisel called this a faucet theory, and she used the faucet theory developed in 2000 to illustrate how some children learn less over the summer compared to others. In her metaphor, the faucet is the learning resources that children have that en enable them to, to learn to make gains. During the school year, the faucet is on for all students and they get plenty of water or resources coming out of their faucet that enhance their learning, they develop their skills and make gains. Over the summer, for some students, this faucet is turned down or turned off, and students from disadvantage, disadvantaged backgrounds don't have as many learning resources flowing into their lives. Students from advantaged backgrounds may still keep their faucets on over the summer and have learning experiences that enhance their skills and help them develop and grow over the summer. But with less resources coming out of their faucet, low-income students have less opportunities to practice their skills and learn. And this is where the gap emerged, emerges. And each year, this gap continues to grow and widen as they fall behind a little bit each summer. They pick up skills during the school year, but they don't quite catch up, and that's why the widening gap emerges as students mature. Our goal now is to really think about how we can develop summer programs that keep this faucet on for all children, that engage everyone in learning experiences that make them feel included and develop their skills. We're going to start with a video from Click to Science PD of Lamont and how he creates a learning experiences that facilitates inclusion of all the students in his program and what are the strategies strategies that he uses to engage students so as we watch the video you may want to take some notes of what strategies you see Lamont using and how those strategies help all students feel engaged and empowered in his learning experiences let me pull up that video for you. I'll take just a moment to switch resources. All right, as we watch this video, pay attention to how Lamont includes all the students in his program and what strategies he uses to engage them in learning. That's the end of the class. Hope you had fun. We had to learn real fast. Depending on the group, we generally try to tailor our activity to make sure that it's fitting their learning style. A lot of the young people that we serve come from impoverished communities, um, but one of the biggest tools that we use is the arts. Had to get the space tape, but it got dry. Across the board, the arts are able to really communicate in a way that really crosses uh, generational socioeconomic boundaries and things like that and allows us to connect and really get to a, a place that they don't necessarily get to tap into in school. An important part of out-of-school time learning is helping everyone feel like they belong. This is true for STEM activities also. 
What does Lamond use as a song to break the engineering process down into steps that are accessible and fun for you? Who remembers the engineering design process? What's the D stand for? What's the D stand for? Define. Define. Yeah, first we define the problem, right? What's the I? Imagine. Yes. Imagine we brainstorm. What is the V? This. You almost said it. Vision. Yes. What's the first E after we get our vision? Execute. 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 Now after we execute our plan, what's the last E? Yes, and what's enhance me? To improve. to improve or make something better. Somebody say divvy divvy what? Divvy divvy what? Say divvy divvy who? Divvy divvy who? Say divvy divvy what? Divvy divvy what? Say divvy divvy you? Divvy divvy you? The word engineering can be intimidating. What we do, we made it into a song. So. The initial lesson, right, if I'm working with a new group of learners um, and I want them to understand that what we're doing is engineering, I start with going through the process. The goal is to get them to remember it, so I don't have to say it again. And we do that by presenting them with the acronym. We use DIVI. And this is based on the same um, process that the engineers at NASA are using every day. It's a, it's a five-step process, D-I-V-E-E, -E, and then we get into our chant. Divi what? Divi who? Divi what? Divi who? And then they start to kind of disassociate it with it just being engineering. And I really am intentional about telling them, hey, like, this is just a process. You can use this here in our activities. Or if you're having a problem or something that you're trying to solve outside of this, think about this process and think about how you're going to get to a solution. So what were the strategies that you saw Lamont using in that video clip? One of the things he really emphasizes the importance of including the arts in STEM activities. And you could see throughout the classroom that there were examples of that, not just in the music and the songs and the call and response he created, but also um, in the decorations around the classroom, the student created art in the classroom. And uh, using that as a strategy to reach all students and to help everyone feel included. So that takes us into this discussion of what are the strategies that you can use in your program to engage all students and to be prepared to learn from those experiences. So what are the ways we can keep that faucet on over the summer months? These are some top strategies from the STEM and Summer Learning Report, The Joy of Meaningful Learning in 2016. And it has some really good advice for summer programs like yours. The first one is to really be intentional about unlocking the potential of all the students in your programs. And one way to do that is to build positive relationships between staff and the students in your program so they get to know them and they um, understand how to engage those participants as individuals and engage them intellectually, academically, socially, and emotionally in the activities that they're planning and make connections that help them see how those activities connect to the things they value in the world. And as you build those positive relationships with young people, it will also make it easier for you to respond to their own individual interests, their experiences, and the cultural practices that they bring to your program so that you can help them build connections between the activities you're doing and their personal experiences. The goal here is to foster engagement of those individuals, but also to build bridges so they can apply their skills beyond just your summer program and can use them to address challenges that they face individually or in their community. And as you help them build these bridges, you're connecting the STEM learning in their out-of-school time to their home, to their school, and to the other settings that are important to them. 
promoting 21st century skills such as teamwork, communication, and problem solving, and helping them see how they can use those skills in other areas is really empowering students to be successful in life beyond just your program. Um, using creativity uh, and engagement to bring um, their own interest to bear in the activities that you're planning, making them hands-on, um, using design challenges and other problem solving to really give them the opportunity to succeed and to fail and to learn from their failure. Helps you create a culture that embraces risk-taking and prepares them that failure is part of the learning experience and helps them be successful in life when they do um, face challenges. So I want to inspire you with a quote from Georgia Hall, who's the director and senior research so scientist at NOIST, or the National Institute of Out of School Time. Here's what she has to say about summer learning. Summer experiences and out-of-school time should be embraced as opportunities not only to help put children on equal footing when they return to the classroom, but to empower you so that they return with improved self-esteem and have more positive experiences within the school day. So our goal here is not just to stop the summer slide, but to empower them, to give them advantages so that when they come back to the classroom, they have the resources they need to get even more out of that learning experience. Not just to keep up, but to get ahead. This is a shot of one of our Pinterest pages with Click the Science PD. And I want to um, use this to help think about the wide variety of experiences that you can provide in your after school program, specifically building STEM skills, but not just using STEM experiences. First of all, there are lots of arts experiences you could use that really help young people learn to express themselves in positive ways and help them build their skills as communicators. You can use theater games paper mache, self-portraits, making music, or creating digital photography to empower young people to think, to be creative, and to solve problems and communicate. You can also use design challenges and inquiry investigations to develop problem-solving skills and critical thinking. You can use outdoor activities like a school garden or a field trip to a park or a wetlands nearby to connect science to the real world, to allow people to experience the outdoors in a relaxing way, and also to move and be physically active. And that just beyond outdoor skills, there are a lot of physical activities you can include that are really going to help young people develop healthy habits and empower them with a positive sense of well-being and personal strength. Include physical activities like dancing, playing in the park, jump roping, swimming, hiking, to help young people develop healthy habits and prepare them for a healthy lifestyle. And healthy food is another way you can prepare these skills for a healthy lifestyle, provide opportunities for children to make their own choices about food, to plan healthy meals, to um, develop healthy habits, and know what are their nutritional needs and how they can meet those by making good choices about what they eat. All of those are things that you can use in your summer program to build skills that are not only going to help students keep up, but get them ahead when they go back to school in the fall. And we realize that your summer program is not just for children. It's a program that really supports families. So I want to talk about resources that you can share with parents, too, to help prepare them to make the most out of summer learning experiences. And there are some great um, websites you can share with your families that can help them build assets for their children. Um, one of my favorites is National Summer Learning Association. Their Knowledge Center has a lot of ideas specifically designed for programs like yours, but also some for families, like this resource here on summer learning ideas at home and in your community that can help families make the most of the time they have together to create learning experiences over the summer. Be a Learning Hero is another site specifically designed for parents. It's BeALearningHero.org.
and it advocates that every parent can be a learning hero and can prepare their children to have great summer learning experiences. So there are resources there that families can use to create positive experiences for their children over the summer. I also encourage you to connect your families to your um, local library summer reading program. And if you don't have a library nearby, National Summer Learning Association has a summer reading list on their website for different ages. So you can create your own summer reading program with families and encourage children to keep reading over the summer, to keep those skills fresh and to be learning new things as they're reading. And finally, um, After School Alliance in their research page and After School After 3 p.m has great infographics and resources that can help explain to parents and other community partners why summer learning is important and why we need to support summer learning programs. Our goal here at Click to Science is to provide you with support and to give you resources and tools that you need to support your own staff in creating the best out of school learning experiences for the children in your program. We have a variety of resources available. <coughs> we encourage you to um, look at our resources on facilitating inclusive learning experiences like the video that we watched with Lamont and think about how you can use these, these resources to help your staff learn to develop a program that counters summer learning loss and engages all children in learning. If you want more ideas on this topic, watch our blogs this month for different perspectives on facilitating inclusive learning experiences and combating summer learning loss. Also look at our recorded webinars on the website for more ideas about how you can implement Click to Science with your staff on a variety of topics and the resources that we have for you to use for free. Our next webinar will be on August 15th, and it will continue this conversation on summer learning as we focus on helping youth build connections from summer to the school year. And also be sure you connect with us at clicktosciencepd.org and sign up for our newsletter so you know about upcoming events. Thank you for joining us today and take a moment to complete the evaluation and give us some feedback on today's webinar. We appreciate your contribution.